37 minutes past the hour, 28 degrees in downtown Fairfield. And time now for our Spotlight program. And as we do every Monday, reserve time for the Fairfield Area Chamber of Commerce. Mindy McAdams joins us in the studios today, talking about all the great things that happened in the last week or so and preview a few things that are coming up this week in the days ahead as well. I want to remind you to sign up for Chamber Chatter. It's your email box every Monday morning, normally in about the 8 o'clock hour. It gives you a quick overview of some of those highlighted items. You can also log on to exploreseiowa.com and check out our calendar events, but more importantly, fairfieldiowa.com and check out their calendar events as well. Plus, there's the business directory and so much more. They recently went over, uh, went through an overhaul, didn't it? It did. It did. What are some of the new features? So the new features will be in the back-end database and it'll be in the business directory, which we're still trying to get it to upload exactly 100% right. So that's still in the tweaking phase, I think. Um, our IT folks are trying to get that fixed for us, but it'll be a lot... Um, easier to find people it'll look nicer it'll be more manageable you can add video um, our members can add videos and photos and coupons they can do hot deals there's going to be a job board so if you're looking for a job um, we've added a lot again all right so (laughs) slowly unveiling all those new uh, features yes as our members have logged in um, we're finding some little tweaks and little changes we need to make here or there to make it easier for our members and more beneficial to them. That's what we're supposed to do, right? We're here to support, connect, promote, and celebrate. All right. Let's go back in time and talk about this past week. It's been a very busy week, and although a lot of these items were not uh, directly related to the chamber, they are community items, which you have a vested interest in. And we'll go back to a first Friday's event on Friday night, which was, uh, from what I understand, fantastic uh, event downtown. Absolutely. It looks like there were people everywhere. I just went to the Santa houses so I could bring you some cookies this morning. <laughs> Thank you um, very much. Exactly what I need. I know. Everybody needs cookies on Monday. Uh, so last Monday, we had quite a few left um, from the weekend. Um, and so we took them to chamber members, as especially the sponsors for the Santa houses. Those folks give us money to make sure that that is all free for those kids. Nobody ever pays a dime for that. So that's fabulous. This week when I went over, I just have a small Tupperware full. So we had I put 300 cookies in there on Friday. Well, so. I, do, I do know I have a friend on Saturday night who was participating in the uh, uh, lighting cruise. Yes. And I said, uh, asked your four-year-old son, Jay, if he went to see Santa Claus. And he said, it was too busy. Yes. Even on Saturday with all of the rain um our friends from aaron were in the the house on saturday and fairfield dental clinic was in the house on friday which is new this year um businesses have chosen a night and they bring their staff in and man it and we give them a head elf that's an ambassador or a board member or a chamber staff member um and so i got the weekend off which was also wonderful uh i'm not in the house every weekend which is magic for me (laughs) yeah so it was very busy we want to remind you every friday and saturday right through the 22nd so you have this friday and saturday next friday saturday and then the 22nd not that we're counting down five more days (laughs) five more five more opportunities opportunities yes but then of course you can also see santa on that christmas eve parade that the rotary does yeah the rotary uh christmas parade we'll talk with folks from the rotary here in the days and weeks ahead as well with that in mind there was the uh light cruise on saturday night and of course that was from visit FairfieldIowa.com. Your top three uh, houses uh, were number three, 700 West Stone Street, number two, 800 Sunset Drive, and number one, I don't think to anybody's surprise, 401 East Burlington Avenue, the Sloka House, but uh, great reviews so with gorgeous. over 15 houses on that on that map. There were people everywhere. Yeah. If you were anywhere trying to cruise, it was crazy. Um, and I really was excited to see that, that that's come back, that there was a sponsor so that that top winner won five hundred dollars. Five hundred and fifty dollars. Um, it was added oh, money. Yeah. Fabulous. Yes. See, look at me a little out of loop. But I love it. I'm I'm really excited because this was the first year we kind of all came together and said, let's work together and promote self promote, right? Let's all help each other out a little bit. So next year that'll be even bigger. We'll be adding more things. So if you have suggestions for Christmas, let us know. Terry at um, Visit Fairfield or me at the Chamber or whoever becomes Josh Larby at Fairfield Economic Development. Um, we're always looking to work together and to make our community better. I have a suggestion. Oh, my goodness. Already? I yeah. have five more days before you can suggest Just it. cancel. <laughs> Just cancel the whole holiday season. <gasps> no. Bah humbug. No. You can't be no. a bah humbug. Come on. I'm the Grinch. 
no, no way. You have cookies. You can't be grumpy with cookies. Uh, I guess so. Again, <laughs> uh, we're Chamber Talk today. Let me uh, ask a question about one of the, your programs you have going on right now with Leadership Fairfield. You're, what, about four weeks into it? Yeah, so tomorrow is their next class, and it's Manufacturing Day. So we tour most of the manufacturers in town, um, and then we do a panel discussion at the end where – um, those folks, those management folks and the like Lori Schaefer Wheaton and Nate Wheaton and Mike Parker um, and somebody from Dexter, they'll all come and they'll talk about their leadership journey. It's a really great opportunity for those participants to just find out because everybody's journey looks different. Um, and they some of the advice that comes from them, I see them every year, but I still come out with like little notes that I put on my board of magic quotes for when I'm feeling frustrated. But all right. yeah, it's been a great. Uh, and then in January... I believe it's Ag January or February is Ag Month. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. I want to remind you that, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, that uh, coming up on the 15th of this month, that is a week from this Friday, is your Lisco Open House Ribbon Cutting, right? Yes, so we're going to kick it off at noon with the Ribbon Cutting with the Ambassadors, and then they will be open until 5, and they've moved right here on Burlington Street. You can see them right outside the window, so we're going to celebrate with them. And then you have to come over to the Nelson & Company for business after hours that evening. That's on the 15th as well? It is on the 15th, right. yes. Um, so we'll be, that should have been in Chamber chatter this morning and we'll be sending out some more information about that well again the Nelson, it's always a good one yeah the nelson company that along with the morrissey are always probably the two most uh, uh attended uh, chamber business after hours of the year but they're all great and speaking of that now is the time that you probably want to go ahead and get your uh business after hours schedule for 2023 i'm guessing the calendar is filling up it is it is we are already starting to put a second member mixer in a few of those months because people like we're well, right away we want it we want it, we want it. We know in January we have the Iowa Dance Collective, so that'll be an interesting one. They're a new chamber member this year, um, and they've they've got so much going on over there. And every time I think I have a handle on what he does, he adds something new. All so right. lots going on there. I want to remind you that uh, the Tree of Lights campaign continues. Uh, let folks know how they can participate in the Tree of Lights campaign, which keeps our beautiful square looking like Christmas City. Absolutely. So you can stop in the chamber office or you can get donate through Facebook. You can donate on our website um, and that helps support the upkeep and maintenance of all of the things that are on the square. And we've already started our um, maintenance and retirement schedule. There are some things that are running out of parts to fix because it's more, you know, becomes like your car becomes more Bondo than car. That's kind of what we've got on a few of our things. We've piecemealed together specifically the wreaths that are hanging around the square. Some of those have like two lights, some have five lights, some have no lights. Um, there's just, you run out of stuff that can be fixed. So some of those are either going to need to be retired or have a major overhaul in the next couple of years. With that in mind, I was looking this morning there in the six o'clock hour, one of the city crews is right out here uh, on Burlington Avenue, right in front of the new Lisco offices, uh, putting new bulbs in or attending to that one because it, it needs work. So I, I, I know that it's a year out and there's a whole committee that works on these things, but are, are we looking at uh, upgrading some of these like pole decorations and things like that in 2024? Absolutely. Yeah, well, we've been talking about it since I started. I've only been here, it's not even been two years yet. Is that crazy? Um, and so one of the first things I said were specifically the candles that are along the the main walkways in the square itself. Those have become orange. They're really not red anymore. And when they were, they had to be completely rewired a few years ago. If you look, the bottom um, is actually upside down. The ivy is um, underneath and not up top. So there's just some little things like that that... Um, it, it should be red. We can't paint them. That's not like the houses that we could paint and make them red. So there's, we're just going to have to do some upkeep. Um, the carolers, uh, if one of their heads fell off, fall off again, I don't know that there's enough left that we can fix because Mrs. Caroler's head's been put on a couple of times now. Um, so yeah, and a lot of, we just have to remember it's Iowa winter. Iowa winters are not, people don't stay outside in the winter for a reason. These things stay outside all through the weather, all through the rain, the snow, the ice, the expansion the weather all of that so it's the sun is hard and a reminder some of these items are 60 70 years old absolutely now uh, i'm looking at it from a, a bystander's position yes it's going to be some there will be pangs of melancholy seeing some of these things being retired but the anticipation of what may or may not take their place is kind of exciting yeah and we if you have like this real sentimental attachment to something that we're going to retire we're going to let people know ahead of time I understand that change is hard. We're going to give you an opportunity to purchase that and take it home with you. Make it part of your own Christmas display at your house. And then that money can be helped to make 
the purchases of the new items. Obviously, this is being talked about for a long time, but uh, is there a schedule? Does the Christmas committee have a schedule of what they're looking at doing over the next, and, and I don't need you to get into details, yep. but they do have a plan for the next five to 10 years? We are working on that plan now. That has not been something that we had done in the past, um, but we have, we, have to, we have to address it now. There are some things that are this year was a pretty expensive year for us, um, and so we're running out. When the the gentleman that fixes it for us said, um, "There's just running out of pieces to put together," um, we really had to really think about that. And so that schedule, we're working on that schedule. Right. Our gals have been going around and marking all of their notes about this looks good. This is needs some work. This is see mold on here. All right. <laughs> Once again, I want to remind you that uh, you can sign up for the Monday morning newsletter, uh, Chamber Chatter. Hit your email box. Email, email the chamber at chamber at fairfieldiowa.com. You can also log on to fairfieldiowa.com. A couple quick notes to put into your calendar. December 15th, a big day for the chamber, as they will be with the ambassadors at noon o'clock at the <laughs> new Lisco offices, which was the former um, Midwest One Bank just uh, here yep. on the square in Fairfield. That's at uh, noon. Uh, go to 05 and I encourage everyone to stop by, check out the new place, enjoy some light refreshments. And then later on that evening at what, 4 5 o'clock? I think we're 5 to 7. 5 to 7 at uh, the, the Nelson, Nelson Company. Company. The Nelson yeah. Company for a business after. Did hours. you make it over to the women's club this Saturday? I did not. I didn't leave the house on Saturday. Oh my goodness. They had, I went over and helped on Friday and they had so much stuff that they were, they got donated um, to sell and they've brought back their craft club so if you have christmas stuff that christmas craft items that you're not utilizing feel free to donate those to the women's club they're going to be building those things all year to sell next christmas all right yeah their annual christmas bazaar and I got uh, my handballs. bake sale yeah <laughs> i wish i'd have gotten there and got some handballs but i did not get it to get there so. i happen to know where you can call and get some oh fantastic i can <laughs> i can call norma myself that's right <laughs> that is our chamber talk here on this monday morning we do it every monday morning here on 1570 kmcd just a reminder log on for a complete listing of chamber events at fairfieldiowa.com. Stay tuned. Market's just around the corner here on KMCD.